Hey man, Hebron Ben Bilal coming back at y'all with another edition of this Boomer's Logic, man. Just wanted to hit y'all off with this video, man, before I get out and about today, um, hustling and bustling. Um, my partner Jack sent me over something about the food shortages, and I just wanted to touch on it real quick, just really getting around to it. Um, been busy with some other things, but as always, man, if you have not come over to the channel, subscribe, hit the bell for notification. Thumbs up the videos, comment, all that type of stuff, man. Go ahead and make sure you do. Um, if you know somebody that you would like to share this information with, also pass along. Tell them, man, subscribe because this is what we going this is what we do, and this is what we're gonna continue to do. Uh, but without further ado, man, I want to give a shout out to my partner Jack Jack and thank him for this video. Um, he was telling me, man, you you spot on with the information that you've been passing along about the food shortages. So he sent me a TikTok compilation of some farmers and what they were saying about this whole food shortage situation and there's one in particular um somebody who works at the ports and i'm going to pause it at that point and i'm going to share my ideas with you in regard to and and some stuff that i had told you previously but while while we've been you know debating about the bet awards and uh figuring out why black women don't like black men um this is what's been going on right underneath our noses, but without further ado, let's check it out. So me and my coworker got talking today and something came up that I didn't really think about when my dad mentioned it to me. He's worked in the agriculture industry for over 40 years. This year, farmers are being offered 1.5 times the value of their crops to destroy them. They're also being told by the federal government they will not receive subsidies for farming if they refuse to destroy their crops. What does that mean? That means that the farmer cannot afford to provide you with food based upon the taxes the government is levying on him if the government doesn't in turn give him back his tax money to provide you with food. Kind of a fucked up system, but that's how it works. And, well, they're not going to subsidize them if they don't destroy the crops. They'll pay them more than what it's worth, and they want them to destroy it, and they'll still get their subsidies. They're trying to create a food shortage. We've got eight months to get our own food supply, where we're probably going to be facing mass starvation. Is it true that the government is paying farmers to destroy their crops? And the simple answer to that is... Yes, they are. I initially heard about the government paying farmers to destroy their crops. I thought it was a load of bullshit. Well, lo and behold, we received our destruction notice the other day. So basically, there was two options on how to destroy the crop. The government could fly on Agent Orange, or we could manually destroy the crop ourselves. Oh, we put too much blood, sweat, and tears in it to let them destroy it, so we decided to manually do it ourselves. Basically, it said if we used a lawnmower to destroy the crop, we could receive an extra $600 an acre. Something about the low carbon footprint or something. So, that's what we're doing. I got my letter yesterday. Um, the letter asking you to destroy some crop. Along with the letter, I had to sign for a certified package, um, which included these these two uh, binders, and then of course this three-ring binder on how to properly dispose of your crops. And as you can tell, it's on government paper. And as you can tell, um, this here is the affected area in my section of the county, um, closest town. And of course, you can't run away where you live. So from the county tracks, then they break it down into these individual farm tracks that you have to destroy. And you can see the, the crop or the field. This is the second machine that I dropped off here for the local farmers. Just want to show you a little bit of each drum. You got four of these drums, two on each side. Now you can imagine the damage they can do, not counting the blade which you can set down. So this will be the first field that we take care of. So all we're going to do is mash everything into the ground, and then I'm going to go pick up some steel plates, lay them across the road, road plates, so we can get the machines over there, start on that farm. So the farmers got paid by the government. I don't understand what it's all about, but they got paid. Now they hired us to come in here and just destroy whatever we can. I don't understand how it all works, but we're already paid for a certain amount of time. You can hear the first machine already running out there. So when you hear them farmers saying they're getting paid to destroy everything, they ain't bullshitting y'all. Y'all better start paying attention. 
Well, what you saw right there ought to concern you. I was doing exactly what I was told via a letter I got last night in the mail from the Department of Hydrocarbons. They said in order to stabilize oil prices, they need a bunch of oil just dumped. And not dumped on the market, just dumped on lease roads and field roads and things like that. So I'm hooked up to that oil tank going straight into my truck to get rid of it. Well, I'm going to get fined if I don't get rid of it, they said. So that prompted me to call District Selectman Tony Deloge and, and ask him about this letter. He said he didn't know much about it, but he would suggest that I follow whatever it says. So here we go. You know, these are some serious times right now. Since January, oil prices have been through the roof. I'm seeing more and more farmers on TikTok saying that the government's paying them to kill their fields. Agent Orange, I saw a guy with a lawnmower mowing down beans, getting paid to do it. Uh, they're controlling food. Now they're going to control energy. I don't understand why this is going on. But I tell you what, if they control food and they control energy, what freedom do you have left? I'm going to stop it right there real quick. Um... First, uh, two things. First, what he said about that they control food and they control energy. Now, it's another video that I'm going to probably post tomorrow. I got to find it. It's way in my archives. Got to find it about uh, this white guy sitting down. He's explaining how um, the future system, how they're how they're setting up to create this future system. And they, uh, he had mentioned all of this. And this was a video I watched about four or five months ago. I did. I didn't post it because of the fact that I know how a lot of people are. Oh, conspiracy theories. Blah, blah, blah. A lot of times you just sit back and you take in the information. And if it doesn't come to pass, it just doesn't come to pass. But you have the information. Um, and it remains information unless you act on it. So right now I know about this because of what I had heard um, analysts say and break down uh, about five or six months ago. So now I'm looking at the manifestation of it. So I'm looking, I'm like, wow, okay. But anyway, him talking about controlling the narrative, that they control everything if they do away with these. Now, if you remember, um, uh, I think it was two months back, maybe, three months back, I made a video about the gas prices going through the roof and why we're sitting and arguing about other stuff and doing other stuff, buying Bentleys and all that stuff. The gas prices are going up as soon as Biden got in office. The gas prices shot through the roof. That's because these people are sitting back and they're getting wealthy off of this because y'all need fuel to get around. Uh, it's an essential part of your everyday existence. And this is, I'm talking about this, oh, we have to stabilize the markets. We are, yeah, okay. But anyway, this is going to be another way to get this particular demographic of people, um, this, sector, this sector rich. Now, before I start the video again, um, give you this uh, quick nugget, and you can Google this if you choose. I'm going to find out who the billionaire investor was. He went out and he bought up all the real estate. He's going around. I mean, he's going everywhere and he's buying up real estate. He's buying up huge swaths of it. Somebody was talking about it. The other day I was like, why is he doing this? Um, then you have Bill Gates. And I'm not sure, you know, you all know he's the population control man. That's his, that's his MO. He loves the whole population control theme, that whole narrative. So he has gone out, actually, and he's bought up all of the arable land. So he's been doing this, I think, for the last three or four years. I think he owns, if I'm not mistaken, and I'm going to pull it up once again. I'm going to show you the video um, of him doing this. He, he owns like 70% of all arable land. He's bought up all the farmland that he could, and he's still in actively buying up farmland so this it goes right back to this narrative right here um of the destruction of this uh, of the crops and manufacturing a crisis situation um and then the third situation was okay the farmland the housing market okay the third one was me telling you about the economics involved in the gas spikes um that other people were sitting back getting rich while we're just sitting back doing nothing so, this is where we're at, man, and, and, and it's getting ready to get worse, and I want to finish showing you the video so they can give you their take, these farmers and all these people here. Man, it missed something. I'm sorry about the music. I'm going to recap. This is the container that was in the video. Yet now, this is the one I want you to pay close attention to because I spoke about this also before. 
I spoke about this, and this is one of the reasons I was talking about the pooling of resources. This is this is one of the reasons I was talking about that. This is one of the reasons that I'm going into expediting and uh, essentially getting into getting my own land and ultimately getting into getting some tramp freighters. Um, listen to what this guy says. And I talked about this before previously when I started to show you guys how um, the stores were going, the, uh, the shelves were going bare in the stores. And then that's the first, was the first indicator to me, not watching some conspiracy video, videos because I work in a certain sector. So I'm able to go into stores every day and look. And I started noticing it and I started talking about it and I started researching it. And this is the rabbit hole that it led me down. And it's just progressively, it is, it's becoming true. It's manifesting right in front of my eyes and yours. Yesterday, and we have unloaded the container. Freight is setting at ports. It is not moving. And we're talking ports around the world. Now, the freight that was on this container was shipped 37 days ago. This is that freight behind me. Somebody is intentionally hindering freight from moving back and forth. There are ports that are stacked. The directive is let it set, let it set. I reached out to my largest customer, this customer, and that's what I was told, that the directive is let it set. We are definitely going to experience shortages, the likes of which you have never seen. So let me stop right there real quick. And <clears throat> to explain this, because I've told you about this before, that they actually literally have cargo freighters sitting in the ocean full of freight. But they're not letting them come to port. Not because of the fact that there's no... Uh, um, that there's no space, which there is no space because they're letting the containers sit on the port, just sit there, and they're not allowing them to be shipped. This is a manufactured situation. Um, I don't care. They can blame it on COVID. They can blame it on what they, whatever they choose to blame it on. Um, I had already had information regarding these uh, vessels sitting out there and they like man these things been sitting out there for uh almost 90 days you know what i'm saying and they're just sitting there and he and they were talking about how that's unprecedented but then they started to blame it on the trucking situation that they don't have enough truckers on the road to come and get the freight well what's that that would work if that was the problem before but that was never a problem before previously Actually, you have more truckers. You have more people getting in the trucking industry. I don't have data to prove that. But from what I hear and understand, a lot of more people are getting into the trucking industry and they're doing their thing in regard to trucking and they're moving into that particular industry because of that innate need for this particular uh, thing. So this is what they've been doing. This is how they continue to control this narrative. And what they're doing is they're manufacturing. They're coming up. They're manufacturing a crisis, and and I'm gonna tell you at the end, towards towards the end of how we can benefit from the manufacturer crisis uh, that they're coming up with. Excuse me, my bell is going off. They're trying to keep me quiet. I need you guys to blow this up and stop scrolling. Control the food supply, control the people. This is what's happening. This is the truth. As a fourth generation farmer, I am hearing cries across the United States. The Biden administration introduced the 3030 bill, saying that it is a climate change bill, a conservation bill. But if you look deeper and if you really research what they're trying to do, Nebraska, it is disgusting. Why the hell does the government want 1.16 million acres in Nebraska? Because 97% of Nebraska is privately owned, so they're taking from farmers and ranchers and hardworking Americans. And by 2030, they want to take 680 million acres across the United States, kill family farms, control the food supply, control the people. Are you guys ready to stand up? So one of the things we're going to be talking about this week is the apparent fresh food shortage that's going to hit Europe and the UK um, over the next few weeks and months. Um, this has been completely orchestrated and it's absolutely terrible that this is likely to be happening right now. 
There is plenty of fresh food being grown at the moment all over Europe. We have no shortages. Farmers have no shortages, despite the weather changes that we've been having recently. Um, there is an awful lot of fresh produce in the fields at the moment, as you can see behind me. This is purposely going to be brought in bulk and destroyed to create an apparent food shortage. So you see the thing that's going on in, in the UK over uh, in Europe and all of that. They're not doing it the same way that they're doing it here. And one of the reasons, this is my personal opinion, is because of the fact that um, and you'll hear it from another guy that I'm going to post probably today or tomorrow when I find the video that he made. Um, when he breaks it down and shows you, you know, how things are working and how things will work. And he, what he shows you is exactly what you're seeing here. Um, that it's being done this way because of the uh, monopolization of the irritable land, farmland, all those particular things um, by uh, Bill Gates. So it's being it's it's being expedited here where they're just going into the fields, kill it all. Where over there, they're being a bit more tactful and saying, okay, look, let it come to term, buy all the vegetables, fresh vegetables, fresh fruits, all that type of stuff, and then, then destroy it. It's going to be a manufactured uh, crisis. Folks, start listening wake up there is no food shortage yo excuse my sexiness i have some breaking news so right now the federal government is offering farmers 1.5 times the amount that their crops are worth to destroy them i know it sounds crazy but just look it up don't use google because they filter your searches use DuckDuckGo, and you'll be able to find reliable information about this um Anyway, and if the farmers refuse to do this, then that same government will refuse to give them subsidies. I truly believe they're creating a food shortage, or they're going to. Can't prove it. Just look into what I'm saying. Make up your own mind. But just to err on the side of caution, get some food. Dried food. Get water. Be prepared. Even if it's not going to happen, shit's getting weird. And I'll need to go back. Okay, so that's it for that. Um, <laughs> hey man, listen. First and foremost, let me say this. Um, I was researching something the other day, and it said, uh, I because I had heard it before, and I was looking to authenticate it that in this country. There were more millionaires made in this country um, during the Great Depression than at any time um, in this country's history. Um, is there a silver lining to all, all of this? Yes, I believe that there is a silver lining because this is a manufactured um, crisis. And I believe that in any crisis, whether manufactured or just organic, um, there's always going to be a silver lining. Um, there's going to be a lot of losses, going to be a lot of suffering that goes on, man, um, and I'm trying to put y'all up on it because a lot of you don't like going to, like the stuff that I watch, majority of y'all not going to want to watch. Um, so I don't have any problem with going to research, find information, and bring it back. Like my wife told me this morning, we were having a conversation, and she said, I would not have known any of this about any of this, nor would I have cared if it wasn't for you because you watch so much stuff and you, you know, pick and choose and you filter through and you get all that you glean all this information and she said i wouldn't even have known about this food shortage this food crisis i would have probably been looking and saying well there's not any food on the store shelves what's going on and it probably would have prompted me at the last minute to go take a look at it um the silver lining to me is that us as a people we can come out on the other end um benefiting we can come out standing erect we can come out um wealthy um once again in crisis situations more wealth is accumulated and amassed because of the needs of the people and people who are opportunistic um and don't take advantage of 
of the the needs of the people and mistreat the people but take uh take advantage of the situation um and benefit from the situation as a whole not misusing the people but taking advantage of the situation and bringing wealth and amassing uh generational wealth in this current climate um i've talked about it before the pooling of resources in my next video that's what i'm going to get to um the biblical principle in regard to pooling resources and the banking system that i've been promising to come out with but this has kind of prompted me to do that um because we're not really paying attention and if you haven't been preparing man you need to get out there and start to stockpile um i've been telling you that i will upload videos from little store trips and stuff like that and i'll, I'll probably do that today throw a couple of them on here man so y'all can see but well, understand this is this is this is happening this is real this is happening in real time man and while we're kicking back arguing other stuff and i don't have any problem with posting that stuff and and reacting to it and things of that nature but my household is preparing and this is one of the things that i do on this channel i give you all information and and you know uh, despite the background despite the lighting despite all of that man this is genuine information and once again shouts out to jack jack for passing this along to me this is genuine information something that i pretty much have been screaming on this platform man since its, its inception it's, it, uh, that man this is happening this is what's going on right in front of our faces and we need to prepare ourselves as a people man um i mean at, at the end of the day they for the most part have really just destroyed the younger generation you know what i'm saying they they you know with with the music with the lbgt with um the interracial dating i mean they have come through like a wrecking ball and now once they come through this is going to i mean when i say stamp just stomp out those ones who are on police cars twerking all this stuff man listen this is what i told you this is what i said is something coming that all that twerking, man, you better be trying to find you something to hold on to. Because all them yoga pants and all that stuff, man, listen. You better be trying to find a way to sustain uh, through what's coming. And I already said, I think it's going to be a 10-month to 12-month window. Dude said eight months. I don't know when this up video was uploaded. He said eight months. I say 10 to 12 months. Um, That it's really going to last. Because I'm seeing you know it happening at the stores right now i believe that the stores will sustain um from what i can see and from what i can hear i believe that they'll be able to maintain with the product that's coming in probably for another two months you know what i'm saying at best and then it's gonna hit the fan man we need to sit down we need to come up with some think tanks we need to come up with some ideas um seriously there's not too many subscribers on this channel so it's not like we're going to be scrambling and trying to figure it out and we got thousands and thousands and thousands of comments man we need to figure it out because it's here on our doorstep and this are us as a people we're going to be affected the worst whether you want to believe it or not we are going to be affected the worst so man I, look I'm giving you the information comment below where should we go from here I talk about pooling resources first, um, setting up an order, a, a, you know, a committee. I, hey, hey, what says you? Leave some comments and your ideas in, uh, in the comment section below, man. Love y'all. And like I say, I'm going to upload some more videos um, either today or tomorrow as I find them in regard to stuff that I've been watching um, and been talking to you about and stuff that I haven't talked to you about. So I'll pass that information along and you can decide what to do with it uh, at the end of the day and what's best for your household, man. You know what I'm saying? Because that's, that's what, what it's going to boil down to. Um, we as a nation, is very we're very selfish and it's going to come down to, you know, the stabilization and um, I guess the pre preservation of our own households. Now, I've already taken care of my household, but at the end of the day, what about the household that's taken care of over there? We can't survive as islands. And I'm not going to cut this diatribe off, but we can't survive as islands. Everybody who has tried to sustain as an island and work independent of each other, guess what happens? They get caught up, man. So, hey, man, I, I, I've, I've done 
I've done my due diligence for this morning. I've done my part. Love y'all, man. Um, as always, man, Hebron Ben Malai coming back with this Boomer's Logic. Dropping another one on you, man. If you haven't already, like and subscribe. And pass this along. It's, it's valuable and important information. All right, see you on the next one.